What was it that made the Amiga so special for me in the 90s? I experienced the Amiga round at my friends Rich and Matt's house and Gareth and Damien's as well. And it felt so special to me because it was a bit of a taboo subject. I was very much wrapped up in the Super Nintendo and the Sega Mega Drive and the Sega Game Gear to even know that the Amiga existed. And had it not have been for those four friends, I wouldn't have had a clue back then. I didn't afford much when I was a kid. So having something like a PC or any kind of home computer was even more taboo. So for me, seeing an Amiga in person felt like seeing a high-end PC back in the day. It felt like something that I would never be able to afford, let alone ever be able to experience in my own bedroom. So it was that element of mystery and it was that element of really, really wanting it, knowing that we'd never be able to afford it. I'd never dare ask for one. And I loved how many different components and layers and discs the Amiga had. It wasn't as straightforward as just blowing a cartridge and banging it in the Super Nintendo. There were multiple discs. We used to titivate around with X copy and we used to watch rich copy games and it felt like a really special experience for me back in the day. So today, I'm gonna open myself up and tell you what games we all played back in the day and the definitive Amiga games that made me fall in love with this home computer. Here are my games. Do you remember those kinds of games when you'd enter a friend's bedroom and there'd be a bunk bed and everyone would pile on the bottom bunk, either watching or playing an Amiga game? Well, for me, Alien Breed was that bottom bunk video game. I remember playing this profusely and I was fascinated by the pixel art and that whole top down, like just look at it. I was mesmerized by it back then. And I recall this game being the game that made me want to have an Amiga in our house for a very long time. Now I mentioned in the intro that I never had my own Amiga as a little girl. It was always round at my friends' houses and I am forever grateful to Gareth, Damien, Matt and Rich for introducing me to the Amiga. So this is a very special game and it was one of the earlier games that I remember seeing and playing for myself. Digressing slightly, the Alien and Aliens films, so the first two films out of the original quadrilogy. We used to also watch them in the summer holidays, sneaking into, you know, the living room where it was more often than not a forbidden place when you went to a friend's house, the living room. You know, it was always filled with parents or it was empty and you weren't to go in there. But we would often sneak into Matt's living room and his mum and dad would be at work and we'd pop a couple of films on. Alien and Aliens, of course, was definitely in our library of films to watch watch. Now we already know that Alien Breed was heavily influenced by aliens. I mean of course the enemies in this game look very very similar to that of a xenomorph. So the kind of Geiger influence if you would. And whilst I didn't marry the two you know IPs together at the time, Alien Breed and Alien, I certainly feel that now. So it's kind of like a double nostalgia palette really. There's the kind of bottom bunk, if you would, the bottom bunk culture of the Amiga scene that I was very much a part of. And then of course there's this huge alien fan that I am today. So I would go as far as to say that Alien Breed, particularly this first game, was and still is my absolute favourite of the entire Amiga scene and of course Team 17 is still going incredibly strong today. So I have a lot really to, to thank Team 17 for and I do have a lot to thank those four friends for so thanks guys maybe one day um, you know Matt, Damo and Gaz can feature in an upcoming video I've been thinking about that for quite some time so fingers crossed um, in fact I'll reach out to them and maybe we can do a gaming memories video together.
Zool really drew my attention as a kid because of the colour palette and of course the brand, you can see Chopper Chops there, a very popular lollipop back in my childhood. And of course all of the sweets and candy rather that you see on the screen now were incredibly influential and it was a genius way to market a video game back then. Whack a popular brand in and the kids will go absolutely crazy. But that aside, we played the heck out of this. And of course, it wasn't just on the Amiga because there was Zool on the 16-bit consoles as well. But it was the first time I ever saw Zool was on the Amiga. And I do think it is one of the better versions. It just seems to work really well. And whilst my shoddy playthrough here needs a little bit of fine tuning, I do feel a massive affinity to this game and it's kind of weird, you know, when I go back to the Amiga now, I feel, it's like I feel the memories and I can still live there in my head, if that makes sense. You can really feel that nostalgia, literally feel it. And Zool for me is one of those popular IPs and video games that definitely gives me that feeling, um, if, if you would. So again, very difficult game. It's not a game that I go to to play very much now. But as we're in a video talking about nostalgia and influence and what it meant, you know, and the power of this video game in the 90s, it would be hard for me to think of the Amiga and not talk about Zool. So here it is, Zool on the Amiga. <laughs> Here's one for you then. Who remembers Quicksave back in the day? Well, when my grandma used to take me to Quicksave, they used to have this toy section all the way in the back. And every Friday as I'd be next to her as she went shopping, I would pray that she'd buy me a toy. And I remember one time that they had these pinball, plasticky, really cheap, tacky pinball toys. Pinball machine for want of a better description. And she actually bought it for me and I was like, this was my first introduction to pinball, if you would, a cheap, tacky, plastic piece of crud from Quicksave. And then about half a decade later, again, I experienced the Amiga with those four friends that I've mentioned and I played Pinball Dreams for the first time. And it was, this was, this was the first video game, pinball video game that I actually played. So coupled with the quick save extravagant shopping experience with my grandma and then playing this for the first time it's hard for me to break that association it's hard for me to dislike this game because again it, it kind of popped my pinball cherry if you would and it just it's just very heartwarming for me so this is a very important game for me. It's very basic and it's certainly not the best looking pinball game on the Amiga. There's much better ones out there, but I don't care. Graphics don't make a game. Um, for me, it's all about nostalgia. This is a packed episode full of, and it's very personal to me. So yeah, this is a basic, but very effective video game. Okay, here we go. Lemmings. Lemmings, Lemmings, I was so bad at this game and for me this was the first experience of actually using a mouse to play a video game. What do you mean a mouse to play? Well yes actually, this was the first time I ever played a game that required the use of a mouse so that's why I've included it in my little nostalgic games that changed my life, uh, you know, Amiga wise. Not only did I play this on the Amiga, but this was also one that was heavily uh, played on school dinner times on the PC in the CDT block, the craft design and technology block on those rainy days when you didn't want to be outside behind a bike shed or, you know, walking around the school. No, we would sandwich ourselves in a small square room on the PC playing lemmings on you know, the PC, I've already mentioned it. Um, so yeah, got lots of cool things with this. The Amiga again, it was the first time I used a mouse and of course taking me back to my PC days, my very brief PC days at school as well. I love this game and uh, it's very like, it, it does test my patience a little bit. 
and I definitely preferred to watch rather than play on the Amiga but again that for me is just as heartwarming to just remember watching my mates just try to beat this game it could be very tricky in places of course but it's really cool and Lemons is a must on the Amiga. I tell you what wowed me about Shadow of the Beast back in the day was the parallax scrolling and again didn't recognize it as parallax back in the day but just look at this the foreground the midground the background the back background i mean whatever kind of ground you're looking at here shadow of the beast was ahead of its time and it definitely tested my skill i think again this was one of the games that I had to put a bit more thought into and if you look at the combat it's very much reminiscent of that of kung fu which i used to play on the atari it was one of the very few atari games that i watched my cousin play and i played a lot of with him we tried to kind of complete it it was five levels kung fu was back in the day so this kind of lends heavily from that premise with your timed jumps kicks punches and again as you can see from my shoddy gameplay my timing was a little bit lackluster clearly my skills from the 90s have become a little bit rusty but we often talk about shadow of the beast as being one of the most prominent um ips if you would on the amiga but nostalgia wise it's also very prominent because of its links with kung fu that i had on the atari and being probably this kind of really was one of the games that blew my socks off graphically um, frame rates looked really nice I just remember being like whoa this game is like next level graphics look at this where did we get where did you get this from nine times out of ten my friends had copies but uh, it was still really nice and cool to play Okay, I just had to let that little intro clip there play a bit longer so you could really appreciate the musical, fantastic score of Chuck Rock. I actually played this with a friend called Paul, so we're kind of deviating from, you know, Matt, Rich, Gareth and Damien. Um, and he's actually on the Mega Drive, believe it or not. But when I kind of found out that this had an Amiga release as well, I knew I absolutely had to play it because I, I really did enjoy it on the Amiga, um, sorry, on the Mega Drive. And I think, again, a little bit like Shadow of the Beast, what really drew me was just how good the graphics were and the character and sprite animations. Now, I've long said that I've been a huge fan of pixel art. Pixel art fascinates me today. Even my YouTube banner is pixel art. Everything, my character, my logo, it's all pixel art. <laughs> and i think i was drawn to this back on the amiga and it does look really good on the amiga as you can see because of the nice finesse with the characters so getting a little bit tricky in places but one that i definitely enjoyed the hell out of i remember playing this for hours having some kind of marathon i don't even remember which friend it was with but we had a massive truck truck rock marathon one day um it was really cool i think i got in trouble for being home late well, it wasn't my fault, it was Chuck Rock's fault, but uh, yeah, loads of really nice, shiny, warm memories playing this. Okay, so my version of Adam's Family here was a little bit glitched, as you can see. I could not get it to run properly. So we have to resort to using AL82 Retro Gaming Long Play to really amplify the beauty of the Adams Family on the Amiga. This is another one of those games that it's aged really, really well if you ask me. And it does tap in a lot into the kind of Mario-esque kind of platforming. Now, obviously, being a huge fan of the Super Nintendo back in the day, I was a sucker for a really nice platform game. So I played this on the Amiga for the first time, and it reminded me of Super Mario World. Like, it was just a oh, sorry, not Super Mario World, Super Mario Brothers. Back on the NES, so not even the Super Nintendo, but it was the NES version. Um, it's that whole just 
left to right kind of stuff jumping on different enemies the different colors you know the bosses everything just screamed super mario to me so i think that's why i fell in love with this and i would like to make a little bit of a suggestion that you make a point to play this this year if you've never played the adam on the amiga please play it it's an absolute boatload of fun and if you like your super mario games you'll really enjoy this i loved this back in the day it was tremendous. Jimmy White's Whirlwind Snooker. Don't judge me on the gameplay you're about to see here because Jimmy pretty much whips my butt, but it makes for decent gameplay, so I thought I'd leave it in just to let this voiceover roll. This blew me away. I never thought I'd like a snooker game, but seeing this for the first time, I was like, wait a minute. You know, it reminded me of the Sunday boring television that my granddad used to watch really late on. And I was like, hmm, this is terrible. But the more I watched snooker, the more I actually really freaking enjoyed it. And I think it was that reminder of my granddad and then learning that this was a thing on the Amiga back in the day that really kind of piqued my interest. So I kind of found this weird peaceful nostalgia pleasure if you would at playing this and admittedly I was never any good and I'm not good at pool or snooker in real life. I just like to hit and hope pretty much like I do with this shot there and I don't end up potting a damn thing. That's when Jimmy took over and well you know, I could have just carried on because he absolutely kicked my butt. But it was a nice reminder and a nice testament to my granddad playing this. And it's quite soothing in its sound effects too. So this was cool to discover back in the day. It's cool to play now and it certainly does require a lot of skill. Skill and patience that I don't mind tapping into though because it's just a ton of fun. Okay, so I remember that Matt and Richard had an older brother called John and he had his own bedroom and it was very, very rare. You are allowed anywhere near John. Don't go near John's bedroom. But one day John was playing one of the Lotus Turbo Challenge games. I've included Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 here because it's my personal favourite. And it was a Saturday and we were about to go on holiday to Skegness or whatever it was. And I remember I had to be home for a certain time, but I didn't want to go home because John was playing this game and I was watching this game thinking, oh my goodness, this, this is, tr th th this looks like Outrun. This is brilliant. What game is this? And it was one of the lowest games, like I've said. And I remember Matt's phone, like the home phone line going, ringing, ringing, ringing. I think it was Matt's dad that shouted, Gemma, your dad wants you. So off I went downstairs only to get in trouble uh, for being late to this stupid, boring, crappy English family holiday that I probably didn't want to go on because home life was shit. But I went anyway and I'll kind of, it was a weird one. I just wanted, I would have much rather have stayed and watched like John play this for the rest of the weekend as far as I was concerned. So when I got a bit older, I had a SNES and I had Top Gear. And of course, that's very heavily modelled. Top Gear was very much modelled on Lotus Turbo Challenge. So I played that game because I couldn't afford an Amiga. So it was kind of my way to be in tune with this game by playing Top Gear on the Super Nintendo. So that's really cool. It's kind of linking in there. It's kind of digressing slightly. But this holds very dear on my heart because... I don't know what it is as to why I was so drawn to it. I think sometimes when you were a kid, you were just very, very drawn to games, certain games. And I was drawn to this. And I can't really articulate why, because on the face of things, it's pretty basic. It's a racing game that doesn't really require much skill. So, yeah, that's my little story about the Lotus Turbo Challenge. Well, it's a great trilogy overall. It's awesome. Well, hello, James. Aren't you just the handsome fish trout thing? Whatever you are, 
I absolutely want to thank you for making my childhood a better place. This was one that I first played with Damien, or Damo as we used to call him, on the Amiga. I say played, I never actually played it as such, I watched him play. It was very eclectic and I don't know, again, it was maybe the colour palette that drew me in and just how crazy it was that you were this cod character that, you know, I think the Amiga wanted so badly to have a mascot, whether it was Zool or James Pond. And I don't ever think it quite came off. Of course, there was Super Frog as well that is, I guess, a little bit similar to James Pond because it's quite eccentric. But this, this was cool because I used to think, this reminds me of the water levels on Alex Kid and Super Mario. So, of which I was both, like, really familiar with, kind of playing the Master System years before. I think that was what, you know, really piqued my passion for James Pond on the Amiga. And, of course, as the levels go and as the games go, there's there's very different things that James can do you know he used to be able to stretch really high in 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 one game and it it was just like this is crazy and I love it and I don't know why but you know it was a bit Alex Kiddish to me um although I think I'd rather play Alex Kidd but nonetheless that's my little story with uh, my introduction to James Pond on the Amiga Discovering Theme Park for the first time, you guess it, was on an Amiga. And I remember thinking that this felt so futuristic and next level to think that I could create something this cool. And as a kid, theme parks were like a huge thing. You know, if you got an opportunity to go to the American Adventure or to Alton Towers as a kid, it was like... It, it was just huge to me it was huge because we, we we aside from the american venture which was a theme park local to us we, we very rarely went so going there was a real treat now me sitting down to watch my friends play this on an amiga was was just it just it absolutely blew my mind i could not conceptualize how cool this was it i kind of felt rich even having an opportunity to play this, I felt special, I felt wonderful, I felt important actually. So it sounds kind of weird and I'm probably rambling on and, and just kind of going off on one here, but I, I'll, I'll never forget that. And it, and it was from from Theme Park that I actually started to discover simulation games such as SimCity. I loved that on the Super Nintendo and then, you know, I, I got to play SimCity later on down in the PC. So for me, Playing theme park on the first time on the Amiga was was revolutionary because it made me realise how much I love simulation games and even today playing um, oh, I forgot the name of the game it's it's one of, I'll, I'll put it on screen now but this is also a great game if you get an opportunity to play this on you know next gen consoles so theme parks are a cult classic it's certainly a gem classic in my curriculum vitae of gaming and one that I'll never forget. Are we feeling rather 80s yet? Well, that music, that intro there very much reminded me of a nice cops and robbers 80s kind of movie. Um, flashback. Let's talk about Flashback because this was one of them games that I think graphically was, again, very much ahead of its time. It was a little bit like Echo the Dolphin for me when I used to play this and watch my friends play because I never really knew what to do and it wasn't until I got a little bit older that I became more averse to the control system and just getting used to the pacing of the game because it can be very slow and um, there's that little load screen in between going from one screen to the next you know it does the game does want you to almost take your time if you would but I think it was more for me about not having a clue on what to do on flashback that was the appeal because i wanted to know what to do i was fascinated by this environment you know you pick up the hollow cube for the first time you think what does this do what purpose does this serve in the game you know it was like i need to play more to find out how i can use it so it was really really cool actually it was the wonderment of wanting to progress and i felt that very much in my childhood with flashback 
it is a game that is a cult classic and we've since had a release i own it on i think it was the 25th anniversary on the nintendo switch so that was really really cool but again it first came to me through the power of the british gaming scene the Amiga guys, I owe so much to that home computer and I don't think I realised how important it would be to me until I've kind of got older and I'm doing these videos now and I'm thinking, holy crap, I experienced a lot of these IPs for the very first time on an Amiga home computer. Okay, they were on copied games, but that's fine because that was the, the nature back then to fire up some, you know, X copy and just copy a load of floppies. So... I loved it and uh, I'm literally voiceovering this now and it's it feels like I've been voiceovering for two minutes but it's been close to an hour and I've lost myself in this episode so we're going to head back to the uh, lady lounge now and just say a few more final words but I would ask this if you're an Amiga fan or a retro gaming fan in general please hit that subscribe button please join me on this nostalgic quest to just be happy and collect and play awesome video games from our past. I have a lot to thank the Amiga 500 Mini for because it definitely reignited my passion for the Amiga and now upstairs there's the CD32, I've got my GoTech drive installed in a 600, I've got my recapped and refreshed Amiga 500 there, all I'm really missing is an Amiga 1200 and I don't really have a passion for the 1000s etc 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 because I don't have the room. I'm very happy with what I've got and it was because of the Amiga 500 Mini that made me fall back in love with the Amiga. So I really hope you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you've enjoyed the games that really influenced my childhood or rather our childhood back then. One of those friends is unfortunately not with us, that's Rich, unfortunately he passed away. Uh, in 2005 so when I think about the Amiga I also think about him as a nice memory as well so please subscribe please leave a like rating and I will link my Amiga playlist in the cards for you to enjoy I need a few seconds of your time to tell you about channel memberships. If you guys want to become a channel member, click join from the main page or the second link in the description. There are three tiers, all with different perks for you if you want to become a team member. Thanks for your time. Let's continue with the video.